4, 3, being renewed to partake of Christ. God had to wait for Israel's unbelief to die out before they could physically cross over the Jordan. This is a picture of the natural man being worn out and the inner man being renewed. 2 Corinthians 4, 16. Israel had to pass through the Jordan, which is where John baptized. Uh, Numbers 35, 10 and Mark 1, 5. Baptism is a type of our death with Christ, which put to death the natural man. The natural man has no ability to believe. 1 Corinthians 2.14 tells us that. The natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit, for they are spiritually discerned. When he sees God's promises, he says, I can't enter into that. Then he complains and murmurs against the Lord and asks, why is my life so hard? We have to cross the river of unbelief. That's what Hebrews means, by the way. Hebrew means river crosser. We cross over out of the natural man with all of his struggle, unbelief, murmuring, and complaining. And we pass into the good land, the rest, by faith in what God has provided for us. Our heavenly Joshua, which is Christ himself, is the one who brings us into the land. Joshua brought the people of Israel in as a figure, and our Christ brings us in to himself as the reality. But Joshua could not bring the old generation in. He had to wait for the children to be raised up and for that old generation to die out. Interestingly, if you dig into the accounts, you will find that the number of people that left Egypt is approximately the same number that entered into the good land 40 years later. The same number that passed through the Red Sea crossed over the Jordan to enter the land, and yet it was an entirely new generation. Here we can see a picture of renewal the putting off of the old man, the renewing of the inner man, and the putting on of Christ. As a New Testament believer, how is this accomplished? By faith. That's how we enter our land, by putting on that which has been provided for us by faith. Our land is our rest. Our land is our Christ. He is satisfaction, and he is our enjoyment. And he's available to me now. But we have to put off the old and put on the new. We have to go through the Jordan and put on the new man. This is a daily struggle. That is why the rest is always today. That is what God is saying when he says, Today, if you will enter my rest. He's not talking about your ultimate salvation. He's talking about partaking of Christ. We can be miserable and carnal, or we can be joyful and have the enjoyment of our portion, which is Christ. Everything we associate with good fruit in the Christian life has partaking of Christ at its base, which is here called entering his rest. This is always something for today. The six days of creation all had an evening, a morning, and then the next day. But did you notice that the seventh day never ended? God rested and blessed it, and it never ended. There was never another evening and then the next day. That will not happen until the millennium. We have been in a Sabbath day since creation, and it's always been held out as a rest for the people of God every day. Yes, God appointed the seventh day of the week under the law as a picture, but that was a shadow. The reality of the Sabbath rest is entering into the faith with enjoyment that is available in Christ. That rest is made available through the gospel, which was preached to them as it is to us. To rest in it meant to believe God's promises and cease for your own efforts to help God in trying to bring his purpose to pass. In the Old Testament, that meant trusting God to enlarge you and multiply you in the land and to deal with the enemies and to clear it out for you. In the New Testament, it means trusting God to deal with you, to clear you out and bring you into the enjoyment of Christ. It is faith in the gospel that justified Abraham according to Romans 4 and Galatians 3. Galatians 3, 8 tells us that the gospel was preached beforehand to Abraham in the promise, your seed will be multiplied, and in your seed the nations will be blessed. That seed was promised the land too. Justification came to Abraham when he believed this promise. And for us, everything is made even more clear because Christ has come. We see Christ as the seed, as Abraham did in Galatians 3.16. Now he has incarnated, lived a human life, died on the cross for our sins, resurrected, ascended, and sat down at the right hand of God. He is our real rest. 
For them, entering the land was a rest. For us, partaking of Christ is rest. You can either partake in unbelief today, or you can take part in Christ today. You can be miserable in unbelief with a hardened heart, or you can keep God's word and acknowledge what he said about Christ and say, yes, that's what I will have. This is what it means to enter into his rest. We need to fear lest any of us would seem to come short of this rest and go into unbelief. For unto us the gospel was preached as well as unto them, and the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. We need to believe the word. It does not profit us to know the gospel unless it's mixed with our faith. For we who have believed, past tense, do enter into rest, present tense, and our rest is partaking of Christ. The argument in these verses is that there was a rest on the seventh day. That rest was presented as a promise to Joshua's day of entering the land. But then again, Hebrews points out that if we are just talking about one day, why would it be offered again through David in the Psalms? The rest is not limited to just the Sabbath day. Christ is being compared to the Sabbath here. He's more excellent than the Sabbath. It was a picture of the rest. We know the Jews made the Sabbath into another kind of work and didn't rest at all. They began making so many rules that Jesus was rebuking people left and right for the way they were keeping the Sabbath. Luke 6, 1 through 5, for example. They made it intolerable burden when it was supposed to be a picture of the enjoyment of Christ. And as we'll see in the next session, this is a reality to enjoy every day.